The White Rabbit. Alice sat picking daisies with her cat on the river bank. She was quite bored until a white rabbit ran by. A rabbit isn't very exciting, but this rabbit wore a jacket and carried a pocket watch. And if that wasn't strange enough, it spoke too. Oh dear, I'm late! It said before jumping down a hole. The white rabbit had proved far more interesting than daisies, so Alice ran to the hole and peered after the creature. Before she knew it, she had leaned in too far. Alice fell and fell and fell. The hole seemed to be bottomless. This must be the. Deepest hole in the world," she said, "unless I'm just falling very slowly." "What's this?" Alice asked as she passed shelves and cupboards that lined the rabbit hole. Her belly rumbled with hunger, so she grabbed a jar labeled "orange jam" off one of the shelves. "Empty," she said. She returned the jar to a cupboard. Alice. Began to worry about her cat. Her worry didn't last long because her thoughts were interrupted when she crashed into the floor of the rabbit hole. She saw the white rabbit off in the distance. Oh my ears and whiskers! How late it's getting! He called as he turned a corner. The creature had disappeared into a hall full of doors. Alice tried each and every one of the doorknobs, but they were all locked. What's that? Alice said as she pulled aside a curtain. It concealed a very small door with an even smaller keyhole. On a table nearby sat a miniature golden key. It fit just right. Alice. Opened the door, and peered into a beautiful garden on the other side. She wanted to explore the bright flowers and cool fountains, but the door was too small to pass through. Whatever am I to do? Alice asked. I can't stay in this hall of doors forever. Alice. Looked around and spied a bottle sitting on the table. It hadn't been there before. She put down the key and took a sip from the bottle. It had a mixed flavor of cherry tart, custard, pineapple, roast turkey, toffee, and hot buttered toast. As soon as she swallowed, Alice started to shrink. What a curious feeling! Alice exclaimed. I'm plenty small enough to fit through that door now, Alice said, but the door had closed and locked again. She looked up through the glass of the table and saw the key staring back at her. Now what shall I do? Alice said, trying her best not to cry. The scent of cake wafted from under the table. It had been too small to notice before, but now Alice was so small that the cake seemed quite large. On the cake were the words "Eat me." Alice took a big bite. As she swallowed, she grew bigger than she had ever been before. Curiouser and curiouser," cried Alice. But now Alice was so big that even her head wouldn't fit through the door to the garden. What bad luck I have," she said. This time there was no convincing the tears to stay put. Drops as big as beach balls rained from her eyes. The hall. Began to flood with salty water. I'm going to be so late, someone said. The white rabbit was back. 
He carried a pair of gloves in one paw and a fan in the other. If you please, sir, Alice called out. The white rabbit was so surprised by the giant Alice that he dropped the white gloves and fan. He quickly scurried away. Wait, your things! Alice shouted after the white rabbit. But it was too late. Alice cooled herself with the fan to clear her head. But just as the cake had not been an ordinary cake, and the potion not an ordinary potion, the fan was no ordinary fan. Alice began to shrink again to an even tinier size than before. Now I, I can surely fit through the door, Alice said. As she walked to the door, she slipped on a wet stone and crashed into the puddle of tears, which now seemed like an ocean. A little mouse had fallen in, too. Don't worry, little mouse, Alice said. But before Alice could reach the mouse, a dozen different birds began falling into the puddle, too. They all flapped and flapped to get back to the shore. Alice pulled herself out of the puddle and shivered. I'd better get dry. I know what will get us dry, said a dodo. A race! It's just the thing to do! So Alice, the mouse, and the birds planned out a course around the lake and under the table. They were off and running before anyone bothered to say, Ready, set, go! Alice ran past the eaglet and then the dodo. Then she passed them again as they flew by her going the wrong way. The mouse sat and took a nap for a while, until she hopped up and started for the finish line again, wherever that might be. Alice was very dry, however, so the race was doing its job. The race is over! The dodo called out, stopping to catch his breath. But who won? The eaglet asked. The dodo pondered for a bit before he decided. Everybody has won, and all must have prizes, he declared. And she will give them out, of course, said the dodo, pointing to Alice. Alice reached into her pocket in a panic and found candies that she had forgotten all about. Luckily, they were saltwater taffy, so the saltwater lake hadn't ruined them at all, but only made them saltier and tastier. Suddenly, the ground began to tremble. The birds scattered off, flying in all directions. Come back, Alice called. Before she could chase after them, she saw what was causing the tremors. It was not an earthquake at all. It was giant footsteps. <laughs>